breaking tonight, 48 hours from the pick that could define the future of the Supreme Court. Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. And thanks again for making justice number one again last week. What a show on deck. CPAC chair Matt Schlapp is here. So is Tommy Lahren and a powerful political panel with David Avella and Chris Hahn. We'll be discussing the president's big decision on the Supreme Court on Monday night and more. But first, just how badly were the feds out to get Donald Trump? And where does the House Intelligence investigation stand now? Joining me to discuss that and more is the chair of the House Intelligence Committee, Republican Congressman Devin Nunes. All right. Good evening, Congressman. Judge, so great to be with you. Well, it's great to have you on tonight. You know, uh, yesterday uh, you sent uh, yet another letter to uh, Congressman uh, Gowdy and Goodlatte asking that they question individuals openly uh, in this continuing Trump-Russia, alleged Trump-Russia collusion investigation. And now it appears that your letter includes up to 42 names, letters, uh, some of them from the executive office of President Obama, as well as the the State Department and DOJ and FBI. What is different about your third letter? Well, the third letter is about Fusion GPS and all the people that are in that realm of Fusion GPS that could have been involved handling the dossier, digging up the dirt, and feeding it into the FBI. And right now, in terms of this information going to the FBI, it seems that you went from the initial, you know, who paid for this dossier? What was it all about? And you seem to have gotten answers to that. We know it was the DNC and Hillary Clinton, uh, the Hillary Clinton campaign. But now the issue seems to be a little more fine-tuned. And that is, how did this dossier get from, uh, you know, the uh, uh, Clinton campaign and steal to the FBI. Do you know what the answer to that is? <laughs> we don't know the answer to that. We think it could have come from many directions, uh, right? So we know that one of John McCain's former staffers did it. We think that many people in the press had this and actually also gave it to the FBI. At the same time, Christopher Steele was supposedly working with the FBI, so there's lots of ways that it made it through. So what we're really asking for, though, is for these 42 people to be interviewed in public. Uh, I, would, I would suggest my, you know, I can't control how they do the interviews and conduct the interviews, but I would think that they would want to do more deposition type. So let the Republicans ask an hour of questions of these witness, of, of the witness at a time, then let the Democrats give them an hour, uh, have it be televised, because these 42 people really help us get to the bottom of, was Trump really colluding with Russia, or was this an, uh, was this an effort, orchestrated effort, by the left, working with the FBI and DOJ, to frame the president and many people involved to dig up dirt to start this investigation? Well, uh, and that's why I think it would be it would be helpful to have all this done in public. Well, clearly in public. But when you talk about a deposition, that is somewhat different than the run of the mill hearing where, you know, the right gets up and says, I'm the greatest guy who ever lived and you're awful. Or the left gets up and says, we're the greatest guys who ever lived and you're awful. You never get answers from these witnesses. It's almost like a circus. It's the same all the time. You think that a deposition will that's get right. into more in-depth information. Will it allow for the the basis of a criminal predicate prosecution in the event that they lie. Yeah, and I also believe, Judge, that there's a task force that the Oversight Committee and the Judiciary Committee have set up, uh, made up of five Republicans and five Democrats. So let each one have an hour at a time to ask questions of these witnesses so that you don't get the grandstanding, you don't get the political speeches. I think that would be uh, worth a lot more for not only the Congress, but ultimately the American people to understand what what information each witness has that's relevant uh, to this matter. Okay, and you know, Congressman, one of the things that I find so fascinating is that the House, I believe it was last week, uh, gave the Department of Justice until yesterday uh, to give them information, this House resolution, for or a deadline for DOJ and the FBI to come clean on the beginning of the Trump investigation, or as the FBI called it, uh, Operation Hurricane. 
Uh, do you know, number one, did Congress get any information from the FBI and DOJ? And number two, if they didn't, where are we with this? Well, as always, we have to pound and pound and pound to get information from DOJ and FBI. They did give us a lot more information last week. We're expecting more information on Monday. But let me, you, you, you mentioned something about Crossfire Hurricane that we know was open July 31st. One of the key outstanding questions that we have is what actually happened before July 31st? Okay, but a so Congressman, they seem to be playing these word games on, about hold this. Hold on, uh, Congressman, hold on. Mm -hmm. What I want to know now is if they don't give you that information, and maybe we can pull the Congressman back up, if they don't give you that information, what can you do to the FBI and DOJ? You've given them more deadlines. Now we had yesterday they were supposed to give us stuff. Now maybe Monday or Tuesday. This investigation's been going on for a year. At some point, don't you guys feel yeah. impotent? Well, look, there's a couple couple things here. So before July 31st, for, for a couple months now, we've been really zeroing in on that. And the FBI and DOJ have had plenty of opportunities to tell us what happened before July 31st. But they haven't. They have not. Right. They have not. They have not. Now, ultimately here, the president of the United States, it's his DOJ and his FBI. And at some point here, he needs to get involved. And, and look, no, were no. there informants you know what, Congressman, I don't want to go there yet. I don't want to go there yet. Here's the thing. You guys have oversight over the Department of Justice. I know your intel. I get that. The American people have been watching this circus play out where you guys tell the DOJ and the FBI, we want these records. You then go through the charade, not you in particular, Congressman, of sending a letter and saying, we want this by Friday. You don't get it on Friday. Maybe we'll get it mm -hmm. Monday or Tuesday. What my viewers want to know, what the American people want to know, with all due respect to you, and I don't think anyone has had more uh, pushback than you. And for that, I give you tremendous kudos. I really do. But the, mm -hmm. the, it's almost as though Congress shouldn't even bother at this point. And we can talk about the president. But what do you mm -hmm. have in terms of a sanction? Otherwise, you guys should be working on legislation. Well, look, ultimately, we have the job of oversight. Okay, They have to comply with us. They've slowly complied. And look, part of what we've uncovered here, let's not forget, it's Congress that's helped under, um, yeah. help uncover the dossier, the dirt, who paid for it. It's just been, look, when people are trying to hide this, like the Democratic Party and the Clinton campaign were trying to hide in conjunction with the FBI, the FBI and DOJ didn't want the American public to know any of this. So we do have a few outstanding documents that they do need to give us. Okay, that's, it's very, very important. Uh, so, you know, what steps do we have? Look, we have other steps we can take. We can hold in contempt. But at the end of the day here, we do need to know what happened before July 31st. That's what we're really trying to get to. Right. If you look at phase three of the investigation, like we talked right. about just a, a moment ago, yeah. having the 42 people come and testify, I think, will be very powerful for the Congress and for the American people to have transparency and sunlight okay, in this whole mess. Okay, but what we're looking at on that full screen is uh, the what the beginning of what the FBI and the DOJ says is the investigation into uh, the President Trump. Uh, July 31, 2016, then candidate Trump. If FBI and DOJ, right where that middle line is, say that's when we began the investigation, and you now find out that a counterintelligence investigation was be, uh, was started against a presidential campaign mm -hmm. a week after the guy gets a nomination of, to be Republican candidate for president, and in fact is before that, then uh, we've got a counterintelligence the, at the level of a third world country. That is correct. So I think any involvement, even in crossfire hurricane of informants uh, being paid uh, to go into the Trump campaign is uh, something that we've, a red line that we've never crossed before. But what could be even worse is if there were informants that were being run into Trump and the uh, Trump campaign and their associates before July 31st, which would be even worse. So th this is why at the end of the day, we have to hold these hearings, we have to ask these questions, and ultimately, the President of the United States is going to have to declassify all this information so the American public knows exactly what the counterintelligence resources that we have in this country, what they were used for. Why do you think, the, think, president is is not, why do you think the President is not declassifying? 
You know, I don't know. The FISA is very frustrating to me because I think that pieces of the, the, the FISA that was got on Car Carter Page, right? That, uh, we've had you know, an ongoing feud about this for many, many months. I think the FISA is totally fraudulent, 100% fraudulent. You have James Comey and others that currently at the FBI and DOJ who are defending the FISA, uh, which is unbelievable to me. So why not? The president ought to just solve this once and for all, declassify. Don't, you don't have to expose sources and methods, but most of that FISA, the pertinent parts of it, could be declassified, and he could help answer for all of us who was telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Were they justified to get a, a FISA warrant on Carter Page or not? Uh, I don't think they were, and I think the American people have a right to know, and the president should declassify it. All right. Congressman Devin Nunes, we'll see what the president does, although I suspect he's kind of waiting for you guys uh, to use all of your powers. But it would certainly put an end to this ongoing uh, investigation. But I want to thank you for all your efforts on behalf of uh, getting out the truth and putting some sunlight into our government. Congressman Chairman Devin Nunes, thank you, thank you so much.